Hello everybody and Happy New Year. This is my first video of the, the new year and I'm sorry it's taking me a little bit of time but you know I've just been enjoying a really beautiful couple of weeks off uh, and I just wanted today to talk about you know I was thinking about that day you know my life is so different now and I was thinking back to that day where I was sobbing on my bed just sobbing I, I was in that visceral pain where you curl up like a fetus and you just cry and cry and cry. And it was it had taken me one year to leave a very violent relationship. I, I'd almost been murdered by my ex and it still took me one year to leave him. That's how powerful coercive control is. And I was now on my own. I had nothing but my baby and just a few possessions, the few I could grab, throw in the car when I fled. So I was at rock bottom. I was totally alone. I had nothing. And I just felt so much shame and guilt. I felt sorrier for him than I felt for myself. How pathetic is that? Like, really? You know, he'd almost murdered me. He was a very violent guy. And I felt sorrier for him even after everything he'd done to hurt me and I still loved him you know that is so, that's how powerful coercive control is and I've never talked about this before but he tried to kill himself after I left and man you know the guilt that made me feel I even had a psychiatrist ring me and I'm not kidding the, the psychiatrist rang, rang me and dumped all this guilt on me and said that he wanted me to come to marriage counselling because um, my ex had tried to kill himself because I had left. I mean, talk about messing with your head as a young girl who has gone through years of abuse and had finally found the courage to leave and put herself and her needs first. To be told by a man in a white coat who back then I trusted and I held with reverence, you know, or people in authority I was scared of, telling me it was my fault that he had tried to kill himself I couldn't get much lower than that honestly and I could have felt sorry for myself I could have wallowed quite rightly in a pity party I could have spent the rest of my life um, blaming him for my pain I could have spent the rest of my life blaming myself for staying way too long in a relationship like that that really deeply traumatised me, like he still does about me. I mean, sadly, he still, after decades, blames me for all of his pain. And, and it, it's, quite, it's quite sad, really. And I could have waited, wasted years moaning in Facebook groups about the nastiness of my narcissist necks as so many women stuck in that spiral do. I see it all the time. But you know what? I had a choice. And this was one of the most important decisions I ever made in my life. And it's yours to make if you want to. You know, we can choose to be, to be defined as a victim of the past or past memories and trauma. You know, you'd think we're, we're, we're quite entitled to do that. And, yeah, you can. You can choose to be a, a victim and defined by that. Or we can decide to move forward with our lives and be defined by the vision of our future instead, an amazing future that's just waiting there for us. And I chose the latter. Many don't. And that was the defining moment in my life. But, you know, the reason many don't and they stay stuck in this victim state and in this spiral is because, you know what, there's a payoff. And I felt that payoff for a long time from staying stuck in a victim state. You know, I got to be the poor me martyr who everyone felt sorry for. 
for. And I see a lot of those poor me martyrs inside Facebook groups, believe me. And, you know, I'm not being harsh. I was that person. And you get to blame somebody else for your problems and deny there's anything wrong with you. Just like my ex, he gets to be in that, stay in that victim state, blame me for the rest of his life, for, for, for his problems and his trauma. And that's, he gets a payoff from that. It's comfortable. You don't have to actually admit there's anything wrong with you. You don't have to go through the pain of facing your demons. Sometimes it's way more comfortable staying in that victim state than actually saying, you know what, I'm going to move forward with my life. And let alone take actions for your behaviour and face those demons and really do what it takes, which is hard to, to do what it takes to transform your life. It's not easy. No wonder most people stay stuck in that, that comfort zone of dysfunction you know, feeling that pain, facing it, taking responsibility for your actions, your behaviour, because I had to. You know, I ignored the red flags and warning signs. That was not his fault. That was me. I had to take responsibility for the fact that I ignored them. I saw they were there. I ignored them. I had to take responsibility for the fact that actually I had very low self-esteem and I had to work on that. But, you know, I instinctively knew what would happen if I stayed stuck in that victim state and defined by my memories of the past and past trauma. I would have gone back. It would have been more comfortable to go back um, to him to just feel better for a while until that dysfunctional cycle and abuse cycle started again. One more hug, one more I love you, and I would have just felt so much better. And I would have gone back to more years of heartache and pain. I would have felt lonely inside that marriage. Even though he was lying next to me in my bed, I would have continued to be abandoned by him, like I, you know, whenever I really, really needed him, like I was the day after we gave birth to our son. I gave birth to the son. He did nothing. Well, he did a little bit. I gave birth to our son. You know, one day after I had my baby, he did the whole thing. He, all his family came and he, look at me, I'm the dad. Aren't I incredible? The second they all left, he disappeared. He went to the pub and got drunk and I never saw him again. Back in those days, he stayed in hospital for four to five days. And he just disappeared and I was in a ward with other young mothers and all their husbands were there and their families were there and I spent the next days all alone. That brings tears to my eyes now. And it was just me and I had to beg him. Five days later, I had to beg him to come and pick me up from the hospital. How sad is that? You know, so I would have gone back to being abandoned at those times when he needed me, I needed him most. You know, those Christmases he would have destroyed, those birthdays he would have ruined, that, you know, that sort of abandoning that, that would happen. And I, I just, you know, even if I stayed strong in my decision to leave him. I could have stayed stuck in that victim state by just wallowing in that feeling of isolation and feeling sorry for myself, a pity party. I could have stayed in that shame and let, let shame just overtake me and those feelings that I failed the relationship and what's wrong with me. I could have milked that for all it was worth to be honest, or I could have jumped into the next relationship that, trust me, would have been abusive. And I didn't. I didn't like that person I'd become. I lay there thinking, who am I? I don't like this person who's pitying and pathetic. Actually, a woman I spoke to yesterday used the same word, I don't like feeling pathetic. So I 
took my power back. And I knew, you know, I know now your past doesn't equal your future unless you drag that past with you. But you have to consciously choose to break those chains that bind you to it. And when I asked myself at that moment, who do I have to be to create the life I need for me and my son? I chose to leave the past behind me and be defined. I was going to go forward with my life. I wasn't going to stay stuck and, and be a victim for the rest of my life. I was not going to be defined by being a victim of domestic violence. I was a strong, capable woman. I just had lost my way. You know, I was a victim of generational trauma. Well, not trauma. It wasn't trauma. I had a happy child and I had very happy memories, but I was a victim of generational dysfunction that my parents unwittingly, who did the best that they could at the time, passed down to me. But that wasn't who I was. I knew there was a better life out there for me. I knew I was better than this. I wasn't this pathetic woman. I could break the cycle if I chose to, so I didn't pass it down to my son, and that's what I chose to do. I moved forward to that better life, and I turned my courage into love, love for myself, love for my baby. I turned my anger, and I had every right to be angry, but I turned it eventually into forgiveness for myself, for staying too long, for my ex, because I saw him as just a wounded animal, a broken, damaged child who was just trying to do the best that he could with the generational trauma that had been passed down to him. And I forgave others who'd hurt me, and I never looked back. You know, I'm not admitting, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, it's not. The journey was the toughest thing I've ever done in my entire life. But I got there and now my vision, I'm living it, you know, on a boat with the most beautiful man who's my champion, my teammate, my best friend. And we have two incredible children who we took around the world on life adventures. And we still, well, we will again when COVID allows us to and both of those boys have grown up into really emotional intelligent men so I broke that cycle and that past you know that pain that I felt that visceral pain as I lay serving on that bed that's long gone that's long gone and you know what only joy remains I don't even have any residual pain or, or, or trauma anymore. Only joy and happiness remain. So what I would say to you is life doesn't happen to you. You're not a victim of it unless you choose to be. And I know bad stuff happens. I know extremely traumatic stuff happens. I've been there. I've experienced it. My daughter-in-law at the moment is recovering from aggressive breast cancer and that's been really harsh and really tough. But you know what? She also chooses not to be a victim of cancer. You know, she is moving forward to her vision of being cancer-free and not being defined by being a cancer victim. You know, and I'm really proud of her for that. And what I just say is, you know, every day is a new day and you get to choose every single day which choice it is. And this is a new year. So what I would say to you now is you've got a clean slate. So which choice are you going to make? So I see there's a lot of comments here. Let me just uh, quickly have a look at them. Hello, Heather from Canada. Hello, Rebecca from Florida. Brilliant. Um, Arij says, how can we know exactly what we want? Well, you just have to choose. Do I want to be a victim for the rest of my life? Do I want to feel like this for the rest of my life? Who is it that I want to be? I, I just said to myself, who do I have to become to move forward from that state? Beverly, hello from the UK. 
Uh, someone else, I don't can't see who your name is. Um, your stories are empowering and people identify with them. Guilt is such a strong emotion. I've subject, subjected myself to the most awful things due to guilt where no guilt was even deserved to be felt. Yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. You you know, bad stuff happens, but it doesn't happen to you unless you choose to let it. And as you just said, you didn't deserve to, to feel that guilt. I didn't deserve that guilt that that psychiatrist dumped on me either. You know, Summer Rose, hi, hello, you're listening. That's wonderful to have you here. Lisa, hello from Michigan. Your mother's a narcissist. Father is um, emotionally unavailable to you. Your grandfather died on my sixth birthday. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That's really, really sad. But it's not poor me. I'm just saying why I'm here. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Summer, I've been working on myself for two years and the progress is slow. This year, two and a half years post brain injury and a whole lot of years previous of being abused. I'm now putting in a goal to um, work on myself with the 12 steps programs. Just another step in my journey of healing. I'm lucky to have a friend that's helping be my mirror, as painful as it is at times. I'm getting more comfortable with speaking my truth and also with less codependency. Uh, Summer, have you seen my um, webinar? It's really worth you watching that. I'll put the link in the bottom of uh, this the, the description here. It's really, if you're ready to put that work in yourself, um, watch my webinar, which is the five steps that my clients use to break free and recover fully from toxic relationships, fall back in love with yourself and your life, and never settle for less than you deserve again. It's really worth you watching that. And everyone that's here, I would really encourage you. Um, Empath Station, thank you for those lovely hearts that you're sending me. Um, and Lisa, you says you uh, that you they've still messed you up big time. Uh, hurt people, hurt people. Yes, they do. So I would watch my webinar. And Tasha says taking back the power is so worth it. Um, ownership and surrounding ourselves with strong survivors. Brilliant. And that's what I encourage. If you're not part of my Facebook group either, please join it. Love you and choose the life you want. Surround yourself with all the people in there who are wanting to move forward with your, your life, uh, with their lives. Uh, that's a really positive Facebook group to be joining, not one of those ones where everyone's stuck in that victim mode. Um, and... Uh, Lisa, how do you suggest an adult woman in her early 40s make friends? Well, come and join my Facebook group as a first step. Anyway, thank you all for being here. Thank you for those comments. That's wonderful. And make this year the best year ever. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.